Hey everyone, Doc Allie here. Today we're gonna to be discussing relaxation techniques to help you overcome your anxiety. In a full transparency with you guys, I was not sure I was actually gonna record this episode or entry because I went through a hurricane week and I was in a very lazy mindset because of it. And I just felt like, you know, I don't feel like doing anything. But then I watched church, my soul felt convicted, and I was basically told that I don't have a choice. So I'm here to help you guys today with how I overcame my anxiety during pre-test, test day, during the test, after the test, all of that. We're going to discuss all of that today. So if you guys watched my last entry, you would have actually heard me talk about how I supported mental health services when you felt alone, when you felt overwhelmed, so that you could properly and healthily conquer these emotions and feelings. And that is actually what I'm going to start with today because there was a episode where I did um, indeed use therapy because I really felt overwhelmed. I felt like I couldn't do it by myself anymore and I needed some guidance. I needed some help. And so I started going to therapy. Um, there were two things that my therapist taught me that I would like to teach you guys. So one thing that my therapist taught me was a guided meditation routine. And what she basically said is you go to YouTube, you search guided meditation. There's options for spiritual people and there's options for non-spiritual people. Either way, they talk you through your thoughts. So you sit there, they tell you to do maybe like relax in Savasana or a dead man's pose. You breathe, you lower your tongue from the top of your mouth. And they take, take you through these things where they help you to like visualize yourself in a calm setting. They help you to visualize things that are gonna help you to not feel so stressed and overwhelmed or upset, whatever the feelings you may be having. And that was extremely helpful. Like I didn't know how helpful it was until I actually had to utilize it because there were moments when I was prepping for my exit exam and that anxiety, those horrible negative thoughts would just hit me and I would be ready to cry. And so I'd have to leave. I would study inside the school building. I would leave the school building. I would go outside and I would find a private place where I could do my guided meditations. And I would walk away feeling like I was walking on clouds. That's how amazing helpful it is. So guided meditation is definitely one thing she taught me. And another thing she taught me was journaling. I've done video diaries before, but journaling is different because you can also track your thoughts. So if you are going to therapy, you have something to tell your therapist about like, oh, this day I was thinking about this, this day I was talking about that. And then it just helps you to also just put your thoughts out get them out you can't talk to your therapist every day you can't you know just always have that outlet but if you journal you do have that outlet daily so those were two things that she taught me the main thing you want to know is you don't use guided meditation and journaling only when you feel anxious she says you basically use this as like a preventative medicine so you're going to journal and you're going to do guided meditation as like a normal thing so that you can like bite off the feelings as they come. It's not like they all build up and then they overwhelm you. You're taking care of it one day at a time. Another thing, so it's not technically guided meditation, it's meditation in general. So meditation comes in various forms, both spiritual and non-spiritual people use it. And I was technically doing meditation before I even considered it meditation. So every morning I have this routine where I wake up, the first thing I do is I try to read my devotionals. I try to say a prayer, sometimes I forget. Um, I had to meet with a prayer partner once a week. And yeah, so prayer technically is meditation. It helps you to come to a place of peace and focus on those things. Focus on that conversation, focus on whatever. So you're focused on one thing and you can help level out. That's all. So meditation in any form that you wanna use it, use it because it is very helpful. And if it's like a regular part of your day, your week, then that also helps you to not hit those moments where you just feel overwhelmed and anxious and down. The other thing I would say is very important is having a test day routine. So with me, I have 
a nervous stomach. So I normally did not have breakfast the day of my test because I was not going to deal with the upset stomach every morning. I just, I canceled it out. I didn't even try anymore. I was just like, okay, what I'm gonna do, I had my water, I had my coffee, and then I had a third cup, and that third cup had a smoothie in it. So smoothies weren't necessarily going to upset my stomach, but because of the nervousness, it might. So what I would normally just do is wait until my stomach started to do a little growl, like I'm hungry, can you give me something? slip a little smoothie and go back to my test so that was one thing I noticed if you have like allergies if you have like certain things like maybe you get a stress headache before the test take your medicine before the test so that you're good for me the stomach because of it I would keep Tums on my table so that if in a case of emergency I could just grab them and it wouldn't be an issue of me trying to go through my bag or anything um what else so that's, that's test day. I, I suggest that you have a test day routine. It helps you to maintain regularity. Um, also, before the test, I would go into a self-study room and I would sit there and I would tune in with music that helped calm me. So for me, it's gospel. Whatever music you feel really helps calm your soul, you listen to that. With me, while I was listening to my music, I was also reviewing information that I had decided the night before I would review the day of. I never went through new information. I never went through anything I hadn't already previously reviewed. I just stuck to strictly review material so that I wasn't trying to cram anything last minute. I was strictly reviewing. Please take note, strictly reviewing. There's some people who can't, they don't want to. I know one girl, she literally says, I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know and she would leave it at that. She did not want to review before the exam. If you feel like even looking at anything would scare you or make you more anxious than you need to be, then don't touch anything, don't look at anything, just use that entire time before the exam to calm down. So for us, I think our school required that we be in the test room at least 20 minutes before the exam started because we had to go through all the protocol of them looking through our, making sure we had our scratch paper, that nothing was written on the scratch paper, our IDs, all that good stuff. So 20 minutes before the test, in the test room. For me, I would get to school at least an hour before the test so that I would have those 40 minutes to do whatever it was for my test day routine. So making sure that you're there on time prevents any, not even on time, early, helps prevent any of that anxiety of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be late, you know? <laughs> so there was an instance when COVID became a thing on our island because when I first went to the island, the island was so strict, we had to stay in isolation for 15 days, test negative the day zero and day 15 of our isolation, and then they would let us out. And so there was no worry about COVID coming into the island, and the COVID that was on the island was already in isolation or quarantine. So the island had super well control over COVID. Unfortunately, there were rule breakers. Like they assumed that people were gonna follow the rules. They scared us half to death. They were like, there's jail time if you break quarantine. So there was no way Allie was breaking quarantine, no matter how miserable it was. So, um, but there were people who decided that the rules were just there for no reason. They ended up spreading COVID like wildfire across the island. So I took maybe three or four semesters without ever having to wear a mask in class or in the exam room. And then during my fifth semester, I had to wear the mask for my exam. And so because this is a completely new experience, I didn't know that my body has a test day reaction. So either my nose will run or it'll get congested. I'll get a tickle in my throat and sometimes a cough. These are things I don't, I can't explain it, but my body does it, okay? And so I was having this reaction and now I have a mask on. And so I'm like congested with the mask on. So I'm trying to, I don't breathe through my mouth normally. So I was just like, I am not breathing. And so my brain's telling me panic mode. We are not breathing right now. I'm literally about on the brink of having a panic attack in the middle of the exam. And that's where meditation came in because I was like praying, please, not right now. I can't afford this right now, please please and then finally i leveled out i was good <laughs> i was so afraid i was gonna run out of that room screaming and crying but i didn't and so i was able to take the test and everything was fine so if you notice yourself starting to go into panic mode bring yourself back 
meditate. As you know, I have that bad habit of worrying about things. Um, I walked out of the step exam swearing I failed. I was such a negative Nancy. I had such horrible anxiety post exam than I did pre exam. And I only dealt with that anxiety for three days, but those three days were horrible. And I can't imagine if I actually carried that anxiety for two and a half whole weeks, like it, there would have been no way. So I ended up going to church and that's what brought me down from all that anxiety. I just had to release it. And the sad thing is I normally do have like a prayer at the end of my exams where I say, I'm releasing it to you. I've done all that I can do. And then I would recite my favorite scripture. And so you guys need to do that where you say, I've done all that I can do and I'm leaving the rest to whoever or whatever you wanna leave it to. And just leave the exam there. Don't carry the exam with you. Don't carry the anxiety of what your score is gonna be or what your grades are. You need to leave it there. My suggestion is if you can do that regularly where you say, okay, I'm gonna leave the scores with whatever, whoever, and then I'm going to go on about my life until the scores come back, that's very good. Um, if you can't, then you just have to distract yourself. That's what I did. So I had my three days of worrying. I went to church, I leveled out, and then I literally kind of forgot about it. It's, it's, that, it's, it's that strange. I just forgot about, I took the test. I wasn't tracking, like some people were tracking down the days until their scores came back for the test. I didn't do that. I literally just opened my email one morning and they're like, congratulations, you passed. And I'm like, huh? Like, <laughs> how did my school get my results before I did? But yeah, so anyways make sure you can either distract yourself or leave it alone and that will help you post exam anxiety lastly about the day before the exam what you can do when those nerves are the worst you're about ready to cry because i feel like when it was test day i wasn't extremely nervous anymore because i was like accepting my fate like i i do what i do i know what i know i don't know what i don't know i'm just gonna go in here and try my best you know and so that was my test day. My test day was pretty level, calm, and I, I just accepted my fate. But the day before my exam, for some reason, it was full-blown panic mode. I would swear I didn't know anything. I didn't learn anything. I had a record of being a good student, but um, my mentor helped point this out. Because of my first school, because of my first experience, I went into the exam confident. I walked out confident. I swore I got an A, I walked out with a 69.5. So that did something to me where I felt it was easier to assume that the worst happened so that if the worst doesn't happen, I feel good. And that's actually not a, like it's a pretty common coping mechanism where people make the assumption of negative things so that when negative happens, it doesn't hurt too bad versus if you make the positive assumption and something bad happens but it's a trap and it's horrible and it's heavy. And I wouldn't suggest that for anyone. I would suggest you just leave the scores for what they are. Um, aside from that, <laughs> so I would go into panic mode um, the day before exams. I would go through lecture slides and I'd be like, why don't I know those two sentences on that slide? Why don't I know this little detail right here? Oh my gosh, I'm going to fail. And if you see yourself going into doomsday panic mode because you don't know simple things, like that's, the whole exam is not gonna be those two little things that you don't know. And if you don't know everything, you're normal. If you don't, <laughs> if you think that you have to know everything to pass or get an A on an exam, you're wrong. So just stay in the mindset that if you've prepared properly, then just leave it at that. Don't go into panic mode. Don't go into assuming the worst. And then also my mentor taught me that because he would notice that like, I guess the further into the day, the closer we got to the exam, the more I would get freaked out, the more worried I would become. So he taught me 12 or two o'clock the day before the test, you've prepared all that long, three weeks, two weeks, whatever it was before the test, 12, two o'clock, call it quits, close the books, go relax, go do something, get your mind together so you could be ready for test day. And that was one of the most helpful things he ever taught me to do because it really did help me bring myself down versus if I kept trying to study until my bedtime, then I'm panicked. And So there's breathing exercises you can do. There's yoga poses you can do if you can go off into like a study room or the library and no one will see you doing something weird. 
There's so many ways for you to make sure that you are in a good mindset when it comes down to tests. And that's what you need to do. You need to practice. I even started doing the Wonder Woman pose in the mirror and the pep talks in the mirror during the step exam on my breaks. I would go to the bathroom and be like, you've got this. Keep your mind together. Don't start thinking negatively. Come on, you've done so well. You've prepped for so long. You're gonna finish this test and you're gonna be so proud that you did. And that's what you need to do. Just hype yourself up, be your own hype man. Stop being your biggest enemy. Stop doubting yourself so much. You have made it into med school for a reason. You have made it through med school for a reason. Just do it, just do it. Nike don't sue me, but just do it, okay? Let's journey to becoming MD together. Until next time, guys.